So you have $10 work, which is low skill, low leverage, right? And my test for, for that is, can you do this with a hangover? Um, so if you could do it with a hangover, fill, you know, inbox zero, communications, updating reports, like that's $10 work. $100 work is low skill, high leverage. So you're amplifying something, but it might be the wrong thing. And so you, I, I'm a big Notion person. I, I use Notion a lot, the productivity tool. Mm -hmm. But people spend months customizing their Notion. Like they're like, I, I need to, I want to be a writer. I want to be a YouTuber. And they create this like crazy YouTube workflow in Notion with calendars and this and drop downs and all this stuff. But they don't record a video. <laughs> Right. And the problem with that is that it's kind of like the where I shy, I'm a little repelled by productivity is because a lot of productivity is in that quadrant. It like gives you the illusion that you're, you know, it's better than the work you can do hungover, but it's not like move. You know, I always say for a hundred dollar work, ask yourself, where do I want to be in five years? And is the thing that I'm working on, like let's use the notion dashboard in this example, gonna take me there? And if the answer is no, then you're in the hundred dollar category. Mm -hmm. $1,000 work is high skill, low leverage, meaning that it is the thing that you're good at. But so for example, um, you know, if I do coaching, that's a skill, I'm good at it, I'm, I get an income from it. Uh, but there's no scale, right? If I take a one year of a sabbatical, the money stops coming in, right? So same if you're a W-2 employee, like you can't just take a sabbatical. So there's no leverage in there. Like the thing doesn't keep going. So then 10K work is the high skill, high leverage is where you're able to actually amplify. So again, take that, that example, like what if I downloaded my brain to five of my colleagues and they could write 80% as well as me, right? That's huge amount of leverage. Right. What if um, we created a great onboarding process for a new employee? And so they get all the information and I don't have to sit and talk to them. That's extremely high leverage. What if we create frameworks that people talk about that we reuse in videos and trainings and coaching, creating that framework, creating brand identity, right? Um, partnerships, business development, like those are very high. Like I could there's a Wall Street Journal reporter that I email with from time to time. Like if they write about rad reads, it's huge for us, right? So building a relationship with a reporter is a, is a, a very high leverage activity. And so mm -hmm. everyone has to do all four of those buckets. But again, kind of like the introspection stuff where we talked about, you know, knowing yourself, just the awareness of like, oh, wow, I did a lot of $10 work today, <laughs> right? You're like, yeah. I just did a lot of that hungover box checking work. Uh -huh. And that's okay. Some days mm -hmm. you need to do that. You can't just be daydreaming and like pitching Wall Street Journal reporters all day. Uh, but having that nice portfolio approach. And so that's kind of the, the anchor to to our productivity system. And that really just moves the needle because I can quickly ask myself, did I do any 10K work today? Mm. What's my 10K work? So is your goal to do something in the 10K work quadrant every day? Or yes. Okay, I see. And then can you clarify leverage again? Because even with the, the $100 work when you're explaining, how is a Notion template that's not effective. How is that one hundred dollar work? It's a hundred dollar work, and a hundred dollar work is um, it, it. You know, we can get to like splitting hairs here, but a hundred uh, uh, maybe a better example of a hundred dollar work is um, a text expander, right? And you have all these phrases that you use over and over and over again. And so you input them into your text expander, and then you can you know like when you're pitching a podcast. You just do slash podcast and it writes this, you know, super long email for you. Okay. Um, that's super helpful. Yeah. But you're not going to be a better podcaster mm. just because you have that thing. Okay. Yeah. Right. And sometimes there's a trap where people get so focused on the tools. Yeah. Because it feel, feel you feel like you could trick yourself in that example. You could be like, I'm becoming a better podcaster by doing this. Like, no, no, no. You are not becoming a better podcaster by automating some part of your pro podcasting workflow. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, 
but don't trick yourself. Don't delude yourself into thinking that you're becoming a better podcaster by, you know, automating some process. I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's, it's not getting to the core of what makes your work good, but it, it is helping. It's helping something. It's totally helpful. Yes. Okay. Can you give us examples then of what is 10 K work? Like what, what have you seen in like different industries? Yeah. Um, so a classic example of 10 K work is hiring the right people. So it's recruiting and retain, uh, recruiting, onboarding, engaging, and retaining. And that doesn't mean just, you know, W2 employees at a fortune 500 company that could be contractors that we work in. So imagine that if, you know, I know you, you, uh, there are a lot of creatives listening. Um, what if, you know, and I'm not a hardcore creative, so some of my language might be off, but, but let's say, uh, you bring in a, a, a contractor an Upworker or something, and you, you need like a bunch of Instagram assets, right? You could sit and talk to them and I like this, I like this, I like this, or you could have invested the time to create a style guide. Mm-hmm. So creating a style guide is leverage because the person walks in, you just slide that paper across the room and they're like, they hit the ground running, right? Uh, another way, again, in the land of creativity, um, a very one that I'm trying to crack right now in um, short form video is having a good format. Once you find the format of a video that works really well for you, your style in your audience and your ideas, then it's mm. so high leverage. I see what you're saying. Right? Yeah, but sometimes that it's, it's framework. about yeah, creating the framework that makes something really work. Yeah. Like exactly. that's more important cuz you can create like you know how they say be consistent to be a content creator, but you can create a bad video every single day versus if you find like a key format, a way to package it. So that's what you mean by leverage, like it just like yeah. amplifies it. Exactly, because okay. then the if you, for, for example, I've done 180 days of shorts and they're not, they're not breaking through. Mm. Um, and I'm not, I know I'm not really a video person. So there's a little steep learning curve for a lot of stuff, but I think part of the reason why they're not breaking through is because I haven't found that format yep. that suits me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm getting closer. Uh, yeah. I've had one or two go pop like viral in, in my, my, my terms. So I'm getting closer. And so I'm constantly trying to figure out what's that format? What's that format? What's that format? Um, and then the other thing um, is a lot of 10K work is, is just making the time to think. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Instead of doing um, the busy work, the little admin things, checking email, but like really how do you think about your work? Exactly. Exactly. And I tell a lot of aspiring creators, young creators earlier in their journey uh, than me, um, I'm a generalist creator, so I just, I can't niche down cause I just hate niching, but it's kind of hurt me. Cause if you ask 10 people, what does Rad Reed stand for? You're going to get 10 different answers. And if you're trying to run a business, that's not particularly a good thing. At least like a mark, it's like kind of a marketer's nightmare, uh, if that's the case. And so one of the 10 K exercises that I've been thinking of, and I've been telling younger creators, it's like, even if you want to be a generalist, cause I'm not a, I would never encourage someone to niche down because I can't do it. So that's my personal advice. Um, think about your work if it was a book. What would the name be? What would the subtitle be? What would the chapters be? What would unite the chapters? What would be the narrative that unites the chapters? Would it be a series of questions? Would it be a hero's journey type story? Would it be topical? I'm going to talk about money. I'm going to talk about this. And that's a to me, that is a perfect example of 10K work, because if you're a generalist, you're going to run into generalist problems, uh, which is really positioning yourself in the market um, so that people know what you stand for. But if you could, it's a little bit like the format for a reel. It's like, if you can kind of like be like, no, I'm going to always come back to these themes, right? Uh, and this is the way I present them. Uh, a great example is Ramit Sethi. Mm -hmm. So uh, the personal finance blogger, I will teach you to be rich, author, Netflix star now. Um, he, oh, he has a bunch of phrases that he uses all the time. My rich life. I don't know if you've ever seen, mm -hmm. seen that phrase. He says that all the time. He's like, my rich life yeah. is he loves cashmere sweat sweaters, like $800 sweaters. My rich life, my rich life, my rich But like he had to come up with that. He had to just commit to using it. 
he had to test it. So like those are the kind of things, and that's how we came up with 10K work, right? Was by just like kind of really trying to figure out how do we get distill all of our productivity ideas into one framework that is communicable. And, and for me, it was important that it was visual.